Hi, welcome back to the Weekly Why. This week we have Parsha Beshala, uh, fascinating Parsha, one of the best ones. We have the Jewish people who are now leaving Egypt. Um, we have Pharaoh who has basically realized his uh, mistake or his heart is hardened, whatever that means, an entirely different discussion on its own. But we have now the Egyptians who are now um, trailing uh, the Israelites. The Israelites come to the Sea of Reeds. Um, they look around and they realize, they look behind them, they see the Egyptians are coming, and they realize they're trapped. They complain to Moses and say, why did you take us here? You know, couldn't we have died in Egypt? Why did you take us out to the desert to die? And then Moses says, don't worry, God's going to save us. And then God says to Moses, why are you praying to me? Put out your staff and the river will split. So a lot of different things can be said about this. Uh, one, there's a famous story, which is not actually in the Torah itself, but it's a story in the Midrash, where you have a man named Nachshon ben Aminadab, and you have this man who jumps into the Sea of Reeds, excuse me, and he goes in and the water rises and rises up until his nose, and then at that point, the water splits. And I think that there's a consistent theme there between what Nachshon did and what Moses was told to do from God. And that for both of them, the idea here is that there was an emergency, there was an urgency here. And Nachshon saw what he needed to do where Moses didn't quite get it, and God had to tell him. What happened, the difference was is that when you're in a situation where there's an urgency, where there's, a, there's an emergency and you know, danger in front of you, you don't, as Moses did, sit and pray. You have Nachshon who jumps into the river and who does it. Now you might think, what do you mean don't pray? I mean, that seems very unreligious, very unJewish. It seems almost like you're pretending or are pushing God out of the picture. And the point is not at all. Is that Nachshon had a lot of bitachon, a lot of this trust in God that, you know, when he jumped in the water, rose and rose and went up to his nose, he had a lot of trust that he wasn't going to drown. He didn't know for sure, of course, but he had that trust where it was going to happen. But the idea here is that he didn't wait for something to happen. We have this dictum in, in Jewish theology, you know, you can't rely on a miracle. You can't stand there and you can't, you know, as Moses was justifiably, I mean, listen, he made a mistake, but Moses could not have, really should not have been standing there and saying, guys, don't worry, God's going to save us. Of course God's going to save you. God had the, the ten plagues and God took you out of Egypt. But the point is that it's the big picture which God saves you. And the little one, you have to do it yourself. So what does that mean? That means that much as when we have with the um, last week, you know, where the Jews, the, or a couple weeks ago you had the, the first commandment given to the Jewish people was the uh, new moon, because the new moon is given by two Jews who see the new moon, then they, they tell that to the Sanhedrin, to the temple, and the new moon, the entire Jewish calendar is based on the testimony of two people. The people create their own calendar. The same thing in the book of Esther, you know, when you have Esther and Mordecai, and Mordecai tells his niece, he says, listen, God's going to save the Jewish people either way. The question is, do you want to be on the bus? So it's the same point here. The point here is that, you know, the ten plates and all that, God's going to save the Jewish people. There's no, there's no question about that, that Jews are going to be taken out of Egypt. God's going to do that successfully. That's not really up for debate. That was, that was never a concern. The question is, is Moses going to be the one to do it? Is Nachshon bin Aminadab going to be the one to do it? Are they going to survive to see it happen? So again, the issue is not whether God would do it. The question is, are you going to be a part of it or not? And so I think that is the point, the lesson for us today in 2012, and of course contemporary times, is that when we are trusting in God, it doesn't mean we sit and we pray and we devoid our, you know, and, and we separate ourselves from our actual obligations because that's not really trusting in God. Certainly it does. It means that, you know what, it's lazy. It's cop out. We don't really believe it. If we were in a battle and there were enemies coming at us, no person would sit and pray. I mean, we know intuitively it's not true. We have the Pirkei Avot, which is the ethics of the fathers, which of course says, you know, it's not incumbent upon you to complete the task. Now, a lot of people, they hear that and they say, okay, you know, I don't have to put the world on my shoulders. But we miss the second part. But neither are you at liberty to desist from it. In other words, don't think that the world relies on you, but act like it does. So you have people like Bill Gates who have given $30 billion to charity, who really feels this obligation like the entire world, you know, malaria and education relies on him. Now, he's not a Jew, and I don't know if he's a particularly religious man, but the point here is that you need to act like the world is on your shoulders, like everything is dependent on you, knowing full well, of course, that God will save the Jewish people, the Jewish people we find. So today we have assimilation, terrible, horrible assimilation. We have, you know, Iran building nuclear weapons. We have all of these things. 
question is, God's going to save the Jewish people. There's a covenant with the Jewish people. The Jewish people will be forever. There's no question about that. The question is, do you want to be part of the Jewish people? Do you want to be part of that? Do you and your, do you want children, your children, to be part of the Jewish people? Because the Jewish people are going to exist either way. The question is, do we, we want to be a part of that action or not? Do we want to get a credit? And do we want to be a part of that immense pleasure? And not just that, but do we really want to fulfill our obligation and fulfill our maximum potential as God's partners in creation in this world? So that's it for Parsha B'Shalach. Best wishes, Shabbat Shalom. God bless.